Brackus, one of the uh, hardest fusions I think they ever put out. Ill, ill-timed and hardest fusions uh, back in the day. Um, really cool champ. Probably one of the best skins in the game. I think most people are, are on board with that. And uh, has a really interesting kit. It's it's pretty complimentary of itself. He's pretty much just a nuker. He does good damage. He brings some interesting utility that we're going to talk about. But he's a cool champ. Uh, can put out some really good damage can do some interesting things. So this is the build that I've put him on for purposes of, of testing him in this video. When you see him in arena and dungeons, there is also a clip of clan boss and I put him in a fury set. It looks like this. This is the build that I put him in for the fury. It's just a double man eater unkillable. I wanted to put him in a fury set and see what kind of damage he could do in that because he's already got a mechanic where when his HP's low, he does more damage, and then Fury does the same thing. When your HP's low, you do more damage. It's an unkillable team. I feel like uh, he, he was begging to be put on a Fury set for that. So when you see what he does in Clan Boss, he's on a Fury set, and he has Giant Slayer. So we'll talk. We'll, we'll get into all that. But um, really cool champ, pretty diverse, can take him a lot of places. I don't know that he's going to change your game, uh, like like some other legendaries you can pull, but he's definitely got some specific things he can do better than anyone else. Uh, and again, he's a fun nuker. He's a fun champ to play around with. So let's talk a little bit about his kit and uh, and and where we think we might be able to use him. His A1, he's got Life Leech built into his whole kit, right? So it's just a standard attack, heals himself by 15% of the damage inflicted. You're going to see, again, I'm learning as I'm going through and really paying attention to the numbers. A lot of these champions have much better multipliers on their A1 than I would have thought. Uh, he puts out more damage on his A1 than he does on his A3. Um, it, it's kind of nutty, actually. Uh, and in most cases, not most cases, I'd say at least half the time, he does more damage with his A1 than with his A2. If he's landing good shots and critting and, and getting good procs, he can do, you know, I, I've seen him do close to 200,000 with his A2 total. Um, he's throwing out wild damage with it. But his A1 hits really, really hard. So this can be a pretty substantial heal. His A2 hits an enemy six times. It's a six hitter. So again, begging for Giant Slayer if you're going to use him in Clan Boss. Uh, he's begging to be used in Fire Knight with this. You get him skilled up, it's a three-turn cooldown. Uh, between him and Cold Heart, that's the shield. You know what I mean? Especially now that Cold Heart's AI is fixed and she, she will only use her A1 into the shield. That's, that's your 10 hits right there. Uh, really, really nice for that. He's not weak affinity either, which is also great. And he's got a chance of placing a weaken. Um, the first hit has a chance of placing a weaken. I don't know that I would really go hard to try to do that. Same with the second part of the skill. Um, I'm sorry, that's the third skill I'm thinking. Of. I saw the fear and true fear. He heals himself if the target has fear and true fear. So if you're pairing him up with someone that's got those debuffs, great. It's a It's a... Good heal. If not, 25% is still fine. And, uh, yeah, it, it's fine. The, the Fear and True Fear is great. But here's where he places it. Now, this is what I was going to say initially. I don't know that I would prioritize accuracy. This is nice. True Fear is great. Spreading the Fear is great. If you want to use him for that, by all means, it can be effective. But it's a gamble, right? It's, you know... 50% chance to do this thing, and then 50% chance to do this. 75% uh, with with the skill ups. Pretty reliable. Pretty good chance of doing it. Still, he's really just here to bang. You know what I mean? He's he's really just here to do damage. So he att he attack buffs the whole team, hits an enemy three times. So again, in his kit, there's your ten hits <laughs> for the Fire Knight shield. Now he's probably not going to get three turns before the Fire Knight gets one, but. The odds that he's going to get at least one of these off are, uh, are are extremely high. So if you've got any sort of multi-hitter um, synergy in the rest of the team, you're going to get that shield down with Brackus in there with you. So uh, three-turn cooldown on on this A2, four-turn cooldown on the A3, and again he's he's just he's set up to hit a lot. He's set up to do damage, and he's got life steal uh, in in his skills. So that's pretty cool. His passive damage increases by forty percent. When his HP drops below 40%, pretty substantial damage bump. And then he also has an effect where he revives with 20% HP when he dies and immediately gets a turn. Now, there is a clip in the arena section. I, I make sure to highlight it when it happens. But it, it's, it's a really, the whole 
uh, sequence in the fight is a really good example of what he brings into Arena. And this can be nice for a few different reasons. But you'll you'll see in this clip a really great example of, of what exactly he brings in, in a series of a couple of turns. And then this right here, I want to go ahead and touch on this. I was having trouble finding Rotos in Arena. I'm not seeing him on Arena defense nearly as much as I used to. But if you ever have a Rotos that's, that's giving you problems, if you notice that you're struggling with Rotos, this is the answer. Uh, a six. I don't care if he's does if he's got defense breakup. I don't care how that Rotos is built. If your Brachus has any worth, <laughs> if he's got any kind of gear on him, he's going to be able to kill a Rotos in one hit. People are not building tanky Rotos, so he's going to slice right through with these six hit. He's hits. He's going to kill him. So this is your answer if you find yourself struggling with Rotos. I wanted to go ahead and mention that too. Um, so again, cool kit. Lots of multi-hitting, lots of damage. He's he's leeching life. He does have crowd control effects if you wanted to focus the accuracy. Uh, really cool stuff going on in his kit. Now, as far as masteries go, there's a few different ways, as, as always, that you can do it. We went with crit rate, crit damage. I wanted to bump up his lifesteal a little bit. Um, give him some more speed based on kills he's getting. Uh, targets with higher max HP, kill streak, and then Helm Smasher. I'm really liking playing around with Helm Smasher for these damage dealers, as opposed to uh, something like Flawless Execution. Flawless ex Execution is nice, but I f it's starting to feel like that one's a lot nicer on your max HP damage dealers, and Helm Smasher seems to be more interesting, at least, across the board when it procs. So I've been going with that one more often, but you could certainly go with Flawless Execution if you wanted. Um, now, if you're building for Clan Boss, 100% you want to put Giant Slayer on him. He's got a six hitter on his A2 on a three turn cooldown and a three hitter on his A3. Uh, you, you want him getting these Giant Slayer procs. So, so if you're building for Clan Boss, Giant Slayer is the way to go. And then over here, again, fairly standard. We just bumped his accuracy up a little bit, gave him Lore of Steel, and gave him the speed bump for each dead ally because you can't increase the duration of fear or true fear. And you can't increase the chance to land it. So I figured, whatever, we'll just give him this. But. That, that's why we did what we did with his masteries. Uh, we also gave him the opportunity to do more damage on targets that do have the fear or true fear in case he does place them or in case you're running him with someone like a Harvest Jack who's going to be putting him up. Uh, I run him with Lydia, uh, as you'll see in Arena, um, and she puts it up as well. So uh, that's it. Over here, again, we got Savage. We, we have the Fury for the clan boss. We did Savage here. He can be good in lots of things. I know people have, uh, that are running in him, running him in Relentless that really like him in Relentless, but he's just a damage dealer, just your standard damage dealer type stuff. Um, and there is an argument, again, to be made for Fury because he sets himself up for it uh, with this passive where he does 40% more damage if his HP is below 40%. If he gets killed and comes back, he comes back with 20%. So not only is he getting this 40%, but he's also getting the big jump and damage from the Fury set because his HP is so low, right? He's lost so much HP, his damage is going to scale up significantly from it. So, uh, again, we we you'll you'll see examples of these things taking place uh, in in the footage of him. So we use him in Arena. We use him in a few of the dungeons. You get to see what he looks like in Fire Knight, and then there's some clan boss footage as well. So you get to see him in action, see what kind of numbers he's pumping out. And uh, overall, yeah, he's, 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 he's a fun champ. He's definitely fun. He can be helpful in some, in some pretty specific ways. If you're looking for a damage dealer in Clan Boss, I think you'll be impressed with his damage considering he's not laying down poisons. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I think, he's, I think he's dope. I'm really happy to have pulled him and, and gotten to play around with him. So I hope you guys like this one. We're going to get to the footage now. Uh, drop a like, you know, all, the, all that fun stuff. And um, that's it. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.